three, two, one. Roll right up right track way. Hurts and shoots, he scores! Mike check four. Number two, number two RL. Three, take three. Ready three. Ready Seven, four, stay with the defender, 30 blue. Ready, Ready, Ready four. Way back, turn the wall after all. That ball is out of here! Oh, sucker! Have a good one, everybody. Shooting to Score is brought to you by Hall Pass Media and Hall Pass Studios. Hall Pass Media is a full service marketing agency that specializes in brand consulting, event management, digital marketing, and creative design. Hall Pass Media has a wide range of clients and partners that include the NBA Summer League, the NBA Coaches Association, and the Basketball Tournament. For more information, please visit hallpassnetwork.com. This episode is also brought to you by Sports Business Classroom, an immersive sports business training and educational experience unlike any other. Registration for this program is now open. The experience is a one-of-a-kind learning opportunity for anyone interested in the sports industry, specifically the business of basketball. For media professionals, this is a unique opportunity to enhance your sports business intellect and network with some of the brightest minds in the field. If you dream of one day landing a job in sports or wish to advance in your career, this program will, will allow you to show the right people that you have what it takes. Sports Business Classroom combines the best of all worlds into a single package. It's great academics, it's hand-on experience, and immersion at the Las Vegas Summer League. You can check out all the details for the 2020 program at sportsbusinessclassroom.com. And if you're at all interested, make sure to apply as soon as possible as this program will fill up. Again, the URL is www.sportsbusinessclassroom.com. When it comes to video production, and especially sports video production, there's one trait that stands out above the rest as a requirement for anyone looking to succeed in the industry. Passion. My guest today exuded more passion in her interview when talking about her career than anyone I've ever met before. Avalon Koenig is a super talented and enthusiastic video creator for Fresh Tape Media. It is clear right off the bat that she has gotten to where she is today because of how much she truly cares about her craft. Her work displays a distinct style which she has developed over many late nights creating fascinating videos for sports ranging from basketball to swimming to cross country. Those long hours working not so glamorous sports no doubt taught her lessons that she uses in her work today creating content at the Super Bowl, All-Star Games, college football playoffs and dozens of other dream events. We talked a lot about the many people she looks up to, a bunch of the challenges us creatives face, and some of the ways she makes her sick run and gun content. Buckle up and enjoy the vibrant and enthusiastic Avalon Koenig. Well, hey Avalon, thanks for joining me today. Stoked to have you on here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. I want to get into it here just talking about um, your you know, beginnings of your getting into video production and, and sports video production. Can you, can you kind of tell me that story? Yeah, so um, I actually rode through college, um, so I was kind of on the athlete side all through um, school uh, at University of San Diego, and I actually kind of oddly started there. I didn't, like, continue into what I'm doing now, but um, it has a weird link. I used to, I think my freshman year, um, I remember, like, looking around and, like, seeing how hard everybody was working and um, just being really stoked about my teammates and everything that all the athletes were doing and comparing it to, like, what normal students do. And I know that's kind of taboo. Like, a lot of regular students don't like athletes being like, oh, our life is so hard, all this stuff. But I really felt it and I wanted to show it because, like, everyone says that and athletes get made fun of all the time of coming to class with their sweats on, all this stuff. And, um I was kind of annoyed by that stigma that we had. And so I was like, well, I want to show like, actually like what we do is so hard in addition to what we're doing, like in school and being in college and being in a new city and all that stuff. So I had a GoPro or I started using, actually I started using um, like our game footage, like mm -hmm. our game footage for rowing. Like we had a camcorder and it was in San Diego. And if you've been to San Diego and you spend any night in San Diego, it's like these beautiful sunsets. We rode on Mission Bay. It was like the most beautiful thing. I'm, I came from Seattle. So like, very beautiful but different you know it's cold up there and snowy and here it was like this there was just beautiful like just looking at our game footage was like looking at a movie and I was like this needs to go somewhere so I started asking my coaches to take the camcorder footage and like put it together because I did that as like a kid as all of us I think did at one point um like way 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 back in the day and uh and so I started piecing together like a a song length video for mm -hmm. my rowing team and I did that and like it got a huge response just from my team and their parents just seeing kind of like 
a hype video, I guess it was, of rowing, which hasn't really been done just because it's so hard to do. And then GoPro came out, and that's what I asked for Christmas or it was the birthday or something like that. And I started bringing, like, a camera out into the boat with me and doing, like, POV vlog kind of things, but without commentary, just, like, hype video. Um, so that's kind of how it started, and it actually got recognized by the university and their their communications department. And so they would use my videos just because they're like, we have no footage of rowing. Can we use yours? And I'd be like, yeah, for sure. And so and that was what I wanted, right, to be like our sport to be recognized. Mm -hmm. um, and so then actually when I graduated, I studied communications. I was going to go into PR. Like video was not on my radar at all. Like that was all for my teammates. It didn't have anything to do with like just rowing or just a uh, video. But then my co I didn't have a job. Like all summer after I was looking for jobs, applying to jobs, I couldn't get any jobs. And um, then our communications department reached out to me being like, hey, there's an internship that has like a video component. I know you do video. So like, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, I don't have a job. So sure. So that's how it started. And then um, that video component, it was actually the position was like a sports information director. So the mm -hmm. you know, you're updating the websites. It's a lot of just website stuff. But that position at our school, we didn't have a creative department of any sort. It was right. just like head of marketing, head of SIDs, and then you had an intern and like one other person. Um, so I was in charge of all video and I had like the broadcast camera kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we would just do stand ups, like recaps. We'd like interview. I'd interview a athlete after the game, like a football player. And then I'd put the B roll that was from the stadium, you know, together in a cut. And I did that for about six months and I started actually seeing Clemson. That was like, so that was 2017. So it was like when Clemson was ramping up their social media that no one had really been doing. And everybody, I was like a joke in the department because every meeting I would bring up like Clemson, I'd be like, okay, but Clemson did this really cool vlog. <laughs> or like Clemson did this really cool thing. Um, and I wanted to do that. And so again, um, with the help of my parents, they got me like a very basic DSLR camera. And so I started just doing my own thing. I did like interview just like more creative trying to get more creative just like learning premiere as i went um and even though like when i look back at them and anybody looks back at them i'm like terrible terrible but um at the time it was really exciting and all the athletes were excited about having like creative content and like more hype videos that like has a higher quality um and just like more personalized stuff mm -hmm. and so from there it just like snowballed into like I wanted to learn more and do more. So I was making all this content. People were loving the content. So they wanted more content. So they gave me more access. And it was just like this crazy thing that turned into a full-time job. At the end of it, they were like, uh, one of my um, advisors, like my mentors told me, like, make yourself essential, basically. She was right. like, if you have to work your ass off, like, yeah, you're at 25 hours a week. But like, if you want to go 40, go for it. And I didn't have anything else to do. So I just mm -hmm. like kind of went crazy to make myself like, essential so then I could ask for the things I was like okay well now you know after like a year I was like this broadcast camera I'm using my own equipment I should not be using my own equipment right. or a university like you now need a creative department and then mm -hmm. you know it just went from there so long story long it was like a weird kind of uh roller coaster into a kind of a just a crazy cycle of content um yeah. that's amazing okay so What's the timeline? How long were you, like, yeah. from the time you picked up a camera at USD to the time you left? Yeah, so I graduated in 2016. So I was doing okay. GoPro, and I was learning. I didn't do Premiere. I did iMovie first, and then, like, I think it was Final Cut. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, like, very spotty. But then 2016, I graduated. I had that summer. So I started the summer of 20, or the September of 2016, so now it's 2020. It's mm -hmm. been about almost four years now. Jeez. So I was an intern for, um, I did a whole year, like a whole school year. So I went from September till um, August and I actually was right. going to leave. I was going to go, my friend actually offered me like a coaching job. She was like, you could do some video up here. Like, but I hadn't really gotten to the point where I could like get a good job yet because I wasn't good enough. You know, it's like that weird point where mm -hmm. you're like, you've learned a lot and you feel like you have a lot, like you have a vision, but you haven't actually like produced really, really high quality stuff yet. So you're kind of in this weird limbo where you need another internship. And so I was like trying to gauge what I should do next. And so I, I took that summer off. And then the next summer they're like, we'll give you a $2 raise, uh, still part time, but if you want to come back, we'll give you a job. And I was like, I kind of, again, weighed, like, I was like, this is basically, I'm going to just, and they all knew this. I mean, I was like, I need to build my resume. Mm -hmm. And 
at USD, like unlike a, you know probably a Clemson or an Alabama or places that have creative departments and have long like these massive don't I mean just like big schools. Right, right. Um, I didn't have any limits. Like I was in every locker room, everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean that was like key to everything is just access. And so I was given this like blank and no direction really. I mean I had direction from you know people above me, but just like as far as I was the only one making anything, I could do really whatever I wanted. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, if I'm if I want to do this, like I'm going to take the hit. I'm going to lifeguard on the side <laughs> and nanny and then I'm going to just like do this blank sleep. And that was uh so about I was hired then full time that February. So I did half of the next year internship and by that time wow. somebody had left and I could kind of I was a shoe in. So, so you spent like two years just just diving head first as as head first yes. as it gets into yeah. this and committing your life to it and going going this is you know I'm gonna go for this and if it works out it works yeah. out if not not but at least you gave it you know it sounds like a, over a hundred percent that's incredible it's an awesome awesome story so I'd love yeah. to dig into your time then because that's I mean just to see the content that you've done like that's incredible the timeline it, it took from you from picking up a camera for the first time and and editing for the first time to produce such you know creative and and there's just so many aspects that I loved about it from um you know the way you're using a camera and the technical you know advantages you're taking things you're taking advantage of and um editing and lighting and audio all of it like just it was yeah. it was I'm a fan of it so I want to kind of pick your brain on those different aspects yeah. I mean w- for and for a camera for instance I mean what what's the DSLR that you started yeah. out using and what were some of the tools that you used to to learn the technical aspects of it totally so uh the first dslr camera i had was um i still have it and i actually use it like all the the videos that i make at home i still use it i have i've upgraded to like a semi better lens and the kit lenses i was mm-hmm. delivered um but i still use the it's a canon 80d or yeah canon 80d um so it's uh that's what i was using at first and then um when usd bought a camera they're like okay Give us. I had a really, really great mentor, um, Greg Marsh, and he was like 100% in support of what I, he was kind of like a hands off, like, I'm going to let you do what you're going to do, but like, I'm going to guide you there. And so mm-hmm. he was like, give me a, I was like, I need a camera. And he was like, give me your top, your middle and your low. And right. we'll probably go with the middle, but like, give us ball out, like, give us a, you know, do all the research. So I did all this research and I came up with the, the one that I used all at same, like all of my videos that or like a little bit higher level than my first videos uh, were uh, was with a Sony a6500, which is like not crazy. Yeah. And then we got two lenses. I had a, um, a 50 millimeter 1.8 and a 35 1.4. And the thing that I learned the most from like using my Canon with the kit lenses was like, the apertures and like the the mm-hmm. vision that I wanted was like movie, right? I was like, I want a movie. Like, well, how can I make it blur in the background? Like, how do people right. do that? I don't get it. Yeah. And I would like look it up on YouTube. Like, how do you blur the background of video? And they're like, and then they'll go into like, oh, you'd set your aperture to like 1.8. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. And so then I realized kind of through that, like if I had a vision of something, I was like, how do you make this happen? And then I'd try to figure out, I would kind of work backwards. Like, okay, how can I make that happen? So When I was doing research, I found the camera, I found the lenses. um, And so those were really what I used. And then um, it was really, I mean, like, everyone says teamwork and everything. And while I was the only videographer there, like, I had so much support from the team that we had. So, like, our head of marketing was actually, like, a very creative guy, too. And he had um, a lot of video ideas. And, like, he didn't do them as much, but he he would help me along the way. And he had a buddy who was, like, a video guy. So I remember, like... I was shooting in 60 frames per second and mm-hmm. exporting in 60 frames per second. And you know how it looks like kind of like I, Max and I said, it looks like a soap opera yeah, a little bit like that fast. And so, um, and I was exporting like that cause I wanted to do slow-mo. So I was like, well, right. if I have to do slow-mo, so then how do I make it look like 24? Like, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that there was like a sequence setting export that you mm-hmm. change it. And so like, that was a whole process of like, I was doing that forever. And then, um, Dante, the marketing guy, told me his friend saw my stuff and was like, hey, you should try exporting in 24. Right. I literally like plugged it in and I was like, oh, <laughs> like I'm made. So it was like yeah. another step. You right. know, it was like things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the next thing that I think like changed everything. Um, so first it was that like shifting, like learning the correct settings and everything and how to like export cor- or like correctly is the wrong term, but the way I wanted it to look. Right. Um and then I went to um, Oregon State University. So uh, again, my team was very, very supportive. And like they wanted to give me mentorship, 
like particularly in video, not mm-hmm. just in content strategy and stuff. So they, uh, my AD, Bill, he uh, was like, we'll send you to, with the baseball team so you can capture content um, against like a big Pac-12 team. Right. I think they're Pac-12. Yeah. Uh, and a uh, big time team. And uh, you'll shadow, like while they're doing their practice day, you can go to their ideation department. We have a d- connection there and you can like spend a day and ask them everything. And I was like, Okay. So they sent me, and I met with their ideation team for the whole day. They were great. They, like, showed me around. I met all their people. And I sat down with Casey. Um, uh, he's, like, the head of the video department there mm-hmm. um, for an hour. And literally, I was, like, starting to order stuff. Like, I was starting to think they're, like, okay, we're going to, like, expand. You can kind of have a, st- a mini studio. What do you want? And I didn't. I was, like, I don't right. know. So we sat down. I was, like, what should I buy? Like, I've been looking at this, this. like what? And he just, like, list- I mean, he spent an hour with me, like, just, like, this is what you need for lighting. This is what you want for that. Yeah, that's a good option, but you could go with that. So I'm like writing now. So I'm like, okay. And then he told me about S-Log, which I'd had the A6500 for nine months at that point, And I was mm-hmm. shooting in like auto or whatever. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know there was like profiles or different. I didn't know you could change any of that. And it always bothered me because I didn't have any filters. So my highlights would be blown out a lot. You know, just like those little things. I was like, it doesn't look right. It, like, I don't know how to make it look right, but it doesn't look right. doesn't look like Clemson. He, yeah, exactly. I was like, why is Clemson still so good? Like, as much as I try, I can't do it. And Casey was like, S-Log. I was like, what are you talking about? And he, like, was, like, showed me. He was like, this is S-Log normal and see how it's all flat and there's no mm-hmm. color and stuff. He's like, and then you bring it back into it. And I was like, what? And that, like, changed my life. Like, I went back and I, uh, he was like, be careful because, like, you have to color grade it right. So, like... That weekend I didn't use it, but I went back and that was the start of the summer. And I just like went crazy on like searching and like finding LUTs. Mm -hmm. And I like tried a bunch of different things and I tried this LUT that I thought looked good. And then I stumbled across what everybody asked me about is like the San Diego look, you know, like the LUT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that blue Mm teal thing. Literally stumbled. It's like a free LUT online somewhere. I just went looking download and like free lets free lets i just downloaded and tried it so you and don't that, even remember the sites or anything no no it they're literally just, just like i just mm-hmm. downloaded because i downloaded a ton of them and i right. found and I just drop them on drop them on drop them on test them go out right. test it in the weight room test it on the jersey test it on whatever and i was like oh that doesn't look right like that looks weird like wow and then i found literally randomly found this light and it was like our brand for the next well it still is so um but that was kind of the progression of like I feel like how I got better is like someone telling me to put it in 24 and then Casey teaching me about S-Log and I was like mind blown wow that's so cool that's so interesting um yeah so okay talk to me about a little bit more about some of the equipment that you guys got and like I mean I was a big fan of a lot of the promo stuff you guys did because it seemed so simple but it was so effective whether it be baseball players on the beach um you know saw some of the cool lighting stuff you would do with those those light tubes and stuff like that like where where'd you come up with all that stuff well again Clemson I honestly probably still have like all the screenshots like my phone was full of just screenshots of like like Clemson media days Mm -hmm. like Alabama media like Auburn's media days like I was like how are they screenshot like the smoke the haze Mm -hmm. like all that stuff and then i'd try to again figure it out like what they were using um and so for the studio yeah exactly exactly and so i um for the studio that we got we like have we had like a very small video budget and for the year that like i was full-time like that summer that i was telling you about we decided to like spend it all on a a studio because we Mm -hmm. had no no place like we had no thing we only had outside to do anything um and that's why honestly a lot of the stuff that i started with were like hype like outside stuff not studio because like we didn't have a studio so like everything we had to do interviews it was all outside um and so what we got was uh we used my office so my office got shifted i had this little desk to the side and my office uh which was a big office i will say it was too big for me but uh we used this like tiny i don't even want to like five foot by five foot space and we got a back a background uh one that like you nail into the wall and then you had like two options Mm -hmm. you could go down so we had black and white and i think Mm -hmm. we had a gray that we never used but so we kept that so i would just pull the thing up and there'd be a window in the back and then when the when we wanted to do something i just pull the things down (laughs) it got really hot in there and gross but it was functional and then we got an aperture 120 which love i mean it's like a staple so that was our key light and then I had, so those tube lights, I looked up, um, we could not afford any of the 
Astra's Quasar, that's what right. everybody was using. We could not afford, they're like, you have like $35, so <laughs> good luck. And I was like, okay. So I uh, looked up online, I think I was searching something. Somehow I found a video, I've sent it to a lot of people who have like asked me about it. It's like a do it yourself. They're, after a while, like, they'll fall apart. I mean, I use them the whole time. They're not, like, the sturdiest. Like, you have to kind of, like, uh, 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 you know, to make them straight. And sometimes they're, like, a little off. And uh, But they're basically, like, you get PVC pipe and you get, like, your typical, like, LED light that you would put on the ceiling. And you, like, drill a hole in the back because they pop off. And then you get the cords that come out. And then you just nail PVC pipe and you put it on your light stand. It's like pretty simple in concept. Mm -hmm. So we got four of those. So I used those. And then I think we had like a couple of uh, like Home Depot, uh, like those triangle lights. Yeah. They weren't. Yeah. And then I think we had one LED light that we actually already had from like a mm -hmm. green screen kit. And so that was kind of what we had. And we, I would just play with those um, in the studio. Um, so total so that was DIY, kind of, like not big yeah. budget at all. Um, yeah, it was but like we spent good. money on, yeah, like two things, like the aperture and the backdrop right. we like spent money on. And we got, got like a cabinet to like store things. And we got like mics. I think we got new mics or something mm -hmm. like that. And then from there on, we were kind of testing it out. But it was a small space, so it worked. <laughs> cool. No, I mean, you guys had some awesome stuff coming out of there that I've, you know, remember seeing. Um switch gears a little bit then to, to some of the games and like the hype videos and stuff that you were making and that you turn around super quickly and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, would you go into games with a, with a shot list or a shot or an edit in mind? Like I want to try to get mm -hmm. these two things cause I know they're going to cut together and then from there we'll kind of build the video around that. Anything like that? Um, not particular. I think after a while I started to realize like what would work and what wouldn't with mm -hmm. different sports. Cause obviously all sports are different right. and like, especially the ones that I knew better, like basketball I was really close with. And so there were definitely things that I was like, I know if I don't have like them getting hyped up, like, and they lose or them getting hyped up and they win. And I don't have that. Like, I'm just going to start with highlights and like, I can't guarantee that, you know, you don't, you never know what you're going to get. So I would right. make sure I would get those hypes. Like, and if I went to a new team, I'm like, Hey, do you do like a cheer or anything? Like I try to make sure I'd get something like that, that I could intro. But other than that, I would just kind of go in, um, and like look around again like my coworker used to tease me about this but i always like get a, like to get a lot of like detail shots like feet mm -hmm. and hands yeah. and things so, like that's kind of how i would build a story is like well if i only have like who knows how many highlights i'll get i'll have those to work in so i like made sure to get some stuff like again access is key so like not everybody can get on the sideline or like by the bench but i would just be in it and so i would just make sure like if there's a break happening like I would make sure and like maybe the first half I would like go to the bench three times and make sure like I get the shot. Like, right. and once I know I got the shot, then I'll like stop going back and I'll like think of something else. But I would make sure I'd get like my shot list was basically like get some hands, get some feet, try to get some cheers and then get the sideline and then mm -hmm. get whatever highlights you can right. get. And then I would just piece those together. D did you have a formula for editing them? Like I'm going to do, I'm going to do hype or like, you know, cheer, yeah. A clo extreme close up on a on a reaction, whatever face or hand, or whatever it is, and then highlight and then go back, or is it just kind of you just throwing it all together? Um, I actually I really like, um, and I know some people are very. This is maybe a um, hot topic, but I really like to cater my video to the music so right. i like to pick music first mm -hmm. and that's kind of how what dictates my storyline so like if it starts like there's one song in particular that like it goes like like that yep. and like of course in the beginning i didn't think anything like i was like oh yeah normally i would do like the cheer i would kind of do a build up right, right. you're like building it because most songs build and i particularly like songs that like ebb and flow so there's like the build up based on what i'm getting it's like you have your build up so you have your cheer some highlights it slows down so i put their faces they're like oh, you know they're all tired and they're sweating and stuff and then it breaks again and then you you know stuff like that i like follow mm -hmm. the music but if like a music has a super like interesting start then like i for that song i like did frames like really quick to like ramp it right, up so right, it was right. like and that was different than like what I normally do, but it was mm -hmm. based on the music. So I tend to like figure out what my song is. And they, t again, they typically tend to be pretty similar. So they end up similarly of like the build, the break, the break, the other, like the down low and then the break again. Um, but sometimes I like to find something that's a little different and then I can kind of change up that um, thing. 
Right. Yeah. W- would you put any restraints on yourself, like uh, after a game, on like I'm, I, I have to be done editing by this time because I need to sleep or something? Like, because that's <laughs> a lot of times. I mean, you know, most of us are probably find ourselves in that position where we can never get it perfect, but you yeah. know, we also. You can't stay up for 26 hours at a time, um, you know, filming, editing, and then doing it again the next day. We've got to to find a break in there at some point. And it just seemed like every single day you were putting out a new video that was, like, just, you know, creative and effective and um, compelling. And, you know, I just want to know how late you were staying up after those games and if you had Uh, any kind of constraint on yourself. uh, No. uh, Basically, especially, like, basketball season was like late nights because those mm-hmm. games start late like the right. for us for football they start at two o'clock mm-hmm. because it was something about east coast teams so those i'd be done you know relatively normal time but um for it was base. i mean the way we did it and i think i did this to myself maybe is how we started this but um like i would do a game recap and like they wanted to post it either that night or first thing in the morning right. so like typically it was first thing in the morning so mm-hmm. I would just have to do it that night. And and I did have a gang, like a, um, my coworkers, Greg and Rose. Um, we were very team-oriented, and so they had recaps and all their crazy stuff to do. So we would all just, like after basketball games, like all basketball season, every single game, men's and women's, it would be the three of us. Like as soon as the game ends, like they're running stats, doing their thing. Mm-hmm. I am literally like down, like like editing, like starting mm-hmm. it. I try to have like a track already picked out. That's about as much as I got. And then I would just like start editing and it would be like two hours of film that I would just cut down into a minute. So obviously we all know that takes forever. So the game would be over at like, what, nine, ten, right. something like that. And we'd, we'd typically all be there till one or two a.m. Like, like Jimmy every Craig, single. like uh, in the media Jimmy section. Craig. Yep, literally like <laughs> we would be. And it was like the the cleanup crew like knew us. Like they mm-hmm. literally come and be like, okay, we're turning the lights out. We're like, yeah. okay, we got it. And like we'd, they'd leave like one light on for us in the gym and we'd be in the Jenny Craig like, Greg's over doing his thing, writing his recap, running the stats, all that, like getting everybody what they need. Rose is next to me, probably doing like a swim recap that she mm-hmm. has to do. And I'm there <laughs> grinding, you know, and we like had fun with it. Like yeah. one time we played pig at like 1 a.m. We're like, we need a break. Um, but yeah, basketball season was crazy. And that's the same every, that was just a standard I think we set for ourselves. So we wanted relevant content and we didn't want it to be old and we didn't want to publish it two right. days later. And sometimes right. we had a game the next day that I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I can't even. I might as well edit it right now. So we just like cranked it out and uh, yeah, no time limits. Like one time in Vegas for our uh, uh, WCCs, there was a game and I remember we won and it was like super exciting. It was such a great game. Like, and I remember being like, I have so much good content because there were so many highlights. They like celebrated like crazy. They had an epic like hype up. I was like, oh my God, this is literally like crushing me because i'm like i have so much to work with which is always a good thing but i'm like it's gonna take me so long yeah. i was only up to like 3 30 in the morning editing that because wow. it was just like so crazy but i try to work but it, yeah it's all out of necessity it's like mm-hmm. uh i think i learned to edit fast because i wanted to get done as quickly as i could so right. i was like but yeah they, but it's it was, like, they were long nights it's very clear like your passion for this and like you're more yes. passionate about like making a cool video than like anything else um yeah true. so that's awesome <laughs> um yeah. uh, so i think i remember like the way i kind of found you or saw your first video or something like that was um i got a notification from or a newsletter from uh, epidemic music i think it was oh, yeah. and they did like a profile thing on you like how did that come about so i um really early on again trying to figure out music because we i used to rip all our songs i mean like literally like oh so sad like i go back i'm like oh i can't hear this it was like your pop culture song you know Mm -hmm. like radioactive or you know all those songs that you have like in your workout playlist i would just like cycle them through like for every video we would rip them and like that's not good to do like we weren't that's not legal but we were like well what else are we gonna do we don't have any music like Mm -hmm. we need music and so we just did it and we're so small we don't have any ad like we don't have any revenue coming from it like we don't have any ads we have no sponsorships we're not like you know those um bigger schools that actually like make money off of their production so we're like there's we're getting 500 views no one's gonna care but eventually i was like we we can't keep doing this like a i'm running out of songs i can't think of this like i don't want to keep risking it like we're getting like you know you just don't want to risk that um and i think that was about the time that people's accounts were getting taken down for copyright violations Mm -hmm. so i was looking into again i dm'd i think uh, a clemson person and i was like hey what's (laughs) what subscription do you use yeah and they were like we use apm and i looked it up and it was like some outrageous amount 
mm-hmm. that I was like, okay, we're an institution. You know, there's like different levels that you can get. And right. for the institution, it was like astronomical. I was like, we have no budget. Like, I can't get that. So yeah. um, I don't know how I found Epidemic, but I reached out to the or, – oh, I, I found them, and I, I bought the wrong subscription. It was like the $15 a month, like the, the individual user. And so I bought that and I used it and they actually flagged me and they're like, hey, wow. like they emailed me. They're like, you're using the wrong, and like you're in a university, you can't use this. And I was like, oh, shoot. I was like so scared. <laughs> and they're like, can we hop on a call and talk about options? And I was like, oh, okay. And so I hopped on a call with like a sales rep. Like yeah. he was great. And I told him our circumstances. I was like, look, we can't afford, we're a small school, we're a nonprofit. We don't make any money off of these videos. Mm-hmm. I need songs. We can't afford like over a hundred dollars a month. We just like right. cannot. And normally it was like two fifty and I he gave me a deal for like ninety nine bucks a month or something. And he was like, just kind of mention us sometimes, like if you can in the comments or something. And I was like, okay, great. Ninety nine dollars. Like I got it approved. <laughs> um and so I started using I used them for everything and I would tag them because they wanted to be tagged. And then I made my video account and so I would also post on there and always tag them. And they just like I mean, they're like an active, they were like smaller at the time. So they'd actually like look at the videos Mm -hmm. and they just reached out to me. They're like, Hey, we love your videos. I was like, I like died. I was like, (laughs) and then they were like, would you like, can we publish them? And I was like, yeah, for sure. So then they started publishing. And then at one point this year, they asked me to do like a promotion thing for them. They're like, Hey, will you make a video? Cause we're going to do one of these things. I was like, Oh my God yeah so now like i kind of i mean i don't know them but we dm sometimes so that's awesome great story love that yeah um so as we kind of want to put the um i guess the ribbon on on your time at usd what was your favorite memory while you were working there oh gosh well i can't not say costa rica it was like my my last uh or no my oh man uh 2017 2018 Whatever. The summer, um, they learned about S-Log that summer. Um, <laughs> they were like, literally like a week before this, the basketball team was going to Costa Rica. They go, you know, on a trip mm-hmm. every four years. And I remember my AD like texted me. He was like, do you have a passport? And I was like, what? Like, it was like a week before. And everybody had been asking me. They're like, are you coming? Like, are you coming? Because I had been filming their summer mm-hmm. workouts and they were like really liking it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Put a good, put in a good word. So I got to go to Costa Rica with the basketball team and just like document everything. And it was like, obviously the best because we were in Costa Rica. So that was awesome. Um, and then I just loved, I mean, the intro videos, we talked about it a little bit, but um, we just, uh, I had kind of this vision that I really want to, again, going back to like rowing, I was like the most beautiful place in San Diego is like sunset on the bay. Mm-hmm. So like, I want to film something that's like so essential San Diego that like someone from San Diego, like I got a bunch of people being like, I'm from San Diego. And like, that was so cool to see like mission bay like i know that yeah. basketball court you know it's like feels like home not just mm-hmm. like in a stadium um especially since san diego is such like a san diego state thing uh i wanted like more san diegans to feel like toreros you know yeah uh, so those shoots like were really amazing like i would i was really they were probably uh, my most nervous because like you can't control the weather and like mm-hmm. i didn't actually know if they would we would have enough lights and like I didn't really know. I'd never done like an outdoor shoot like that before. And then both times that we did it with the men's basketball team first and then the baseball team, like it was the most beautiful evening in San Diego. Like it was just the most perfect. Like I honestly, I feel like I had nothing to do with it. It was like just things worked out and the players were just so into it. And like, so just like, it was just great. Um, Like good vibes. And um, yeah, so those are probably my two favorite shoots for sure. Well, if you're this like upbeat and positive and stoked on set as you are like talking here, I, I don't see how anybody in a shoot with you couldn't be like, this is awesome. Um, you, would th- you would think some people were a little I was like, yo, come on, give me something here. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that went a long way. But um, I mean, you talk about these beautiful evenings, but then you chose to leave all that. Uh, can you talk about that move and that transition yeah. and how that all happened? Yeah. So um, Fresh Tape. I had found them on Twitter, like, so I got Twitter that, the end of that summer, um, like, when I went to Costa Rica, and, uh, the year before I left, basically, um, and that was, like, exploded, like, forever I was trying to find who was making content, like, Mm -hmm. I followed, like, Clemson men, like, football or whatever, but I had no idea who was making it, I got on Twitter, and, like, I found, like, our community of people, just, like, you find, 
you're just like, oh, that person's, I mean, it's like the craziest community. Yeah. And I just like followed everyone. I had like a thousand followers in a day. Cause I was like, oh my gosh. Like, and then I would just get down these rabbit holes and like, it was bad for me at some points. Like there were points <laughs> that I was in the office, like on the floor, like I can't come, like, how can I keep up? Like, did you see what they posted? Like South Carolina. I mean, there was just like so much gold on there. Mm. I, you know, old, so I've kind of backed off from Twitter a little bit cause it overwhelms me with all the great stuff going out. But, um, I somehow found fresh tape because I think uh, I was following someone who like Austin Kuhn or something mm -hmm. like that. And I was like, what is fresh tape? And I looked at their page and they're very new. And, uh, I kind of was trying to piece, I couldn't figure it out. I was like, I don't know what this is, but like, how do they have all these great creators making things like, whoa. And then, um, so I followed them and then they started kind of like to get going. And, um, they reached out to me in November of that year, like my last year there, and um, offered me like a freelance. So like, hey, do you want to do this thing? Um, it was NASCAR. They're like, we have an opportunity. Or they were just like, hey, we just like got a recommend recommendation from one of our creators. They're like, you're really great. Like, do you want to freelance? And I was like, I'd never been asked to freelance. I never freelance. I had like nothing. Like I, and like literally that DM, like I have a video of it. Um, my mom took it cause I was like in Canada for my dad's birthday or something. And I literally had like a panic attack. I was like, cause it was like the culmination of like the people that I admired the most, like mm -hmm. reaching out to me. I just like, I died. Um, so that was also, of course I was like, yes, of course, of course, whatever you want. And I remember I like was having these panic attacks cause I'd be at work and everybody at work knew about it. You know, I'd be like, guys, I'm so nervous. Like what's, what am I going to do? And it was one of those, like, I remember being on a call with them and they're like, can you do this? Or like, do you want to do this? Like, would you be comfortable with this? And I'm like yes yes like yes and I got off the phone I'm like oh my god like literally like no <laughs> I mean I knew I was ready but I didn't feel ready you know and my boss was like you're ready like you're ready and I'm like I don't know if I'm ready like can I do anything outside of San Diego like I don't know I've never done it um so anyway that's how it all started and I went to NASCAR and it was like my bread and butter kind of event I mean speaking of like the events they do obviously we do like sets and like tons of different things but like mm -hmm. the first one I did was like a NASCAR run and gun it was like free range again like pretty much all access like just go out it was like 10 hours a day just like go out shoot and come back and like grind out some things so I was like oh I can do it like this is like what I do like I yeah. can do this and so it was a great event and like I met Max and Alana and like I one of my biggest fears too is that, again I had a great team at San Diego even though like everybody's like oh you did the video by yourself I'm like no like my team was like my marketing department, the communication, like we worked so close and like, mm -hmm. I would just go over there like for just for mental support, just everybody got along, like the team with, there's no egos. Like it was just like the, the smoothest running team, like you could ever imagine, like the best mentors, like the best first job. So I was really nervous that my next job was going to be with someone or people that I either didn't get along with or who had egos or like had something or like didn't make me laugh. And literally the trip was like, again, it was just Max and Alana that time. But I was like, you guys like are my favorite people I've ever met. Like I'm yes. Like I, like I came back just like so excited and they liked me too. And they, you know, told Jared, our boss, they're like, yeah, like she's great. And so after that, like I did a couple more gigs and they were kind of like, they were looking to expand. And so they're like, Hey, would you ever be interested in coming to Denver? And I had no, like, I, that was not in, like, I thought I was going to be at San Diego for at least another year or two, just because I feel like I was not anywhere near done. I didn't learn enough. Like, I didn't feel confident enough. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of told you that. I still feel like a rookie. Like, I was like, I still don't have a lot of experience. Like, even though I'm doing things, I'm doing kind of the same things. I just felt like I wasn't, like, ready for, like, a bigger level. And uh, from then on, and I told him, yeah, I was like, yeah, I would be interested, like, in the future. And it just, like, moved really quickly. And, like, in a couple months, like, that, you know, my first shoe was in November, I think I did the CFP and like the Super Bowl with them uh, that winter. And then in like January, he was like, okay, but like, are you ready to move to Denver? I was like, wait, now? Like, I don't know. Not now. Like, not now. Like, what? And partly because I was attached to San Diego. I mean, right. it's like my home. had been my home. I've been there for seven years at that point. I had like built this thing that like I was really proud of that I was like excited to be a part. And my boss and like my team, we all had like these plans for how to make it better and bigger and like, that was super exciting, but, like I said, it was, like, I was up till 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I mean, I didn't see my friends for, like, four months straight. Like, literally not a friend, other than my friends at work. But it was, like, extremely, extremely, like, draining. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, like, again, I loved every moment. Like, people would be, like... I, like, I remember going to a shoot with Fresh Tape, and, like, somebody who, like, we know on Twitter is, like, you're always doing... How are you doing all that stuff? I'm, like, I'm drained. Let me tell you. <laughs> like, I'm drained. Like, I love yeah. it. 
don't get me wrong, I freaking love it. And, like, I would have stayed 100% if it, this wasn't the right move. But I just, like, I was, like, could I do – I couldn't imagine – like, when I imagined my next job, I was, like, well, I can't imagine a job that has – this kind of freedom that I have, like this access that I have, like able to do all these different things and learn from someone. Like, I don't want to move into a position that I'm sacrificing some of that. You know, it was really hard for me to like sacrifice that freedom and like the independence I had. I just like, wasn't sure. But then at the same time, I wanted teammates. I was like, I need help. I need support. I want a mentor who's like actually a video person, like who's teaching me things. I'm tired of YouTube. Like, I wanted that, but I was like, how the hell am I going to get that? And Fresh Tape was literally like checked all those boxes. I was like, mm -hmm. people I want to learn with, like at that point it was Max and Alana. And I was like, uh -huh. well, we can go back to Clemson. Literally, I was like, I found out Max did all the Clemson videos. And so when I met him in person, I was like the most nervous. I've told him this like a million times, but I'm like, you were literally my idol. Like you were my idol. And now I'm like, we we're friends now. It's crazy. Like if I, <laughs> if like young me knew that I'd be working with Max right now, like I would have had a heart attack. And like, I told him there was like these videos. I remember being at lunch with him one time and there was this one video that I, like, like shook me to my core. It was like this one where like the guy looked in the mirror, but like the camera wasn't there, you know, it was like, he looked in the mirror. It's yeah, like this yeah. constant high -end video. And then I remember like, this was like just a little while ago. I was like, sitting with him and I, re I remembered that video and I was like Max I was like did you make the video where the guy like looked in the mirror and he's like oh yeah I was like Max that video like changed my life he's like oh thanks I was like oh my god so anyway um point is like it was I knew I was gonna leave college athletics um or the way that it is structured right now just because it's everyone knows who's in it like you love it but it's a massive sacrifice um, and I just like could not imagine a better opportunity to like learn from people and grow and like all the things that I wanted of like all the stuff I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I knew I could learn here and I knew it was going to like, it scared me. And that's what the biggest thing I was like, absolutely terrified. I was like, this is going to be, I don't know what I'm doing. Like they're going to find out and I'm going to go <laughs> and they're going to like, I'm going to be in trouble because I don't actually know what I'm doing, all this stuff. But I was like, this seems to be the best place to learn all that. So, and since it has been great. So that was in, um, I, I just had last month my year anniversary. So cool. That's yeah. yeah one that's of the that. big, one of the big points that I think that was hammered home in the last episode that I did was like, you wouldn't be asked to come in for these opportunities or people wouldn't bring you in if you weren't qualified, you know? So it is because most people that are in this field, like, you know, you're never, you always think like, I, I, you know, the videos you put on aren't good enough or, you know, you're always yeah. comparing yourself and stuff like yes. that. But like, that was something that, you know, was a valuable little tidbit from the last interview that I did. So, so it's true. like, it's just seeing it, seeing that kind of thing between a lot of different people in the industry, like you're so not true. alone. Um, but that's like, you know, something that as you get older and stuff, or just that, you know, the sooner you realize it, the, the better it's going to be for you. It's, it's yeah. just like, people wouldn't be coming up to you. People wouldn't be asking you and putting you in this position if you weren't good enough. So just trust yourself and, you know, trust what you know, and, um, and you'll be all right. Uh, so going to the fresh tape though, I mean, for those who don't know, um, can you describe a little bit about what it is and, and some yeah. of the, some of the different stuff you guys do? I know you do a lot. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we're a creative uh, production company that's based out of Denver, and we do um, kind of any and everything to do with media, mostly video. Um, so we do everything from, um, like, we specialize in tentpole events, mm -hmm. I would say, like, right now. Again, none of this, like, the cool thing about Fresh Tape that I like the most is we're not restricted by anything. We're not, like, we are we have to be this. Like, we are willing to be anything that we need to be and that we want to be. So um, it's always kind of shifting, but I would say I think what we're known most for is doing the temple events that we do, like going to Super... Like, any major um, event, like a draft, like NHL, uh, MLB, All-Star Games, Super Bowl, CFP, all those big events, like sporting events, mm -hmm. um, we're typically at, uh, mostly because our boss, Jared, has these connections with pretty much everyone everywhere <laughs> yeah. like in all social media realms and then sports realms because he worked he was the sports partnership um at vine uh before oh. it was shut down wow, so okay. he knows everyone just from doing that mm -hmm. um to twitter you know just all those major places he knows people um and he's a great content uh producer and so when he started his own company he already had all these um these connections and then he just brought on you know a team that 
could execute them. So he has like these amazing ideas. He always says this. He's like, he's like the idea guy. And then we go out and we'll, you know, execute. So Max is here. Um, Alana, uh, we have Gabby, who's our ops person. Alana does a lot of the, um, like mocks and she, she can do a little, she can do like a lot of everything. She can do like everything. Uh, Max is our creative director. I'm a creative strategist and strategist. And then we just brought on Andrew Stewart, who was from South Carolina, um, as another, a senior strategist. So, uh, what we do is, you know, at these tentpole events, we typically have sets. And so mm -hmm. we do like specialize in set design um, and we'll come up with the brainstorm and we do everything from like start to finish. So right. uh, we'll come up with the idea. We'll hire, you know, like a team to build the actual set. But like we're the ones developing the set, um, the idea of what the video is going to be on the set uh, based on what the client wants. And then we'll go on set and make those things. So um we also do stuff like run and gun. Uh, I just did this cribs tour for the professional bull riders. Um, and so we went around, like we literally drove through Texas for a week to like three different guys ranches and like did like a tour, like a MTV mm -hmm. cribs kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we do like lots of creative stuff like that. We'll make gifts, you know, everybody's right. seen like gifts, like funny things. We'll make like kind of funny, stupid things, but things that are like necessary for the internet. Um, so stuff like that. What's, you know, one of the coolest projects that you've gotten to work on at Fresh Tape that you think? Oh, man. Well, again, I will say, and I will always say, the NASCAR event that I did, that first one when I was mm -hmm. contracting them, was definitely my favorite by far, just because it was, like, my favorite thing to do. And, um, I mean, like, everyone on my team knows this, but, like, I lo still love to do the running guns, just like I did at San Diego. Like, that's my mm -hmm. favorite thing. I feel like I'm the best at that um, for, like, myself, my own skills. Like, I don't feel like I'm as good at you know, I'm trying to learn. I want to like be better at interview sets and, you know, different right. things like that. But I definitely feel like I'm, that's kind of my bread and butter. So I really enjoyed being at NASCAR and it was just like the environment of it. And just like, I'd never been by a pit crew. I'd never been by these loud, like you, we didn't even know we needed earplugs. Like it was just like a whole nother environment that I'd never been around. So, um, that was really, really cool. Uh, it was also like the introduction to like pro sports that I'd never been around anything more than San Diego. So, um, that was really cool. And then I've honestly, I've taken a big liking to oddly is I don't know what this genre says about me but to the professional bull, bull riders um I got to go to like Big Sky with one of our clients and then um to like the world finals in mm -hmm. Vegas mm -hmm. and again we did a lot of run and gun but we also we did a set build and this one I led which was really cool it was like the first time I'd ever like been project manager of like a big media day kind of event and so it was cool for me to like start to finish like I didn't I felt like I knew a lot more than I normally do. Normally, I feel like I show up to these sets. I'm like, Max, what do you need? What do you need me to do? Like, okay, right. I'll set up the light. But I don't feel like I have a total grasp on everything yet because I'm still new to it. Um, so, but this PBR event we did, we did, we had three different sets. We had like a laser set. We had the saloon door set. And then attached to it on the other side, it was like these marquee lights. And so it's supposed to be, you know, kind of Western, but we just had these guys and they came through and their outfits are just amazing. They have these chaps, you know, they're just like, <laughs> like do create, like they have these cowboy, I mean, it was just like gold. Like they have these cowboy hats. It's amazing. So they came through all three sets. And so I was on the saloon door set and like, that was that. And then I got to go and run and gun the, like the actual like finals mm -hmm. and like you're on the shoots. Like, I mean, again, talk about access. Like I was literally like, I almost got. I swear to God, I almost died from this bowl. This bowl, like, <laughs> it was dark. It was halftime. And this bowl, like, they're not tied down. They're just, like, in the chute. You know, it's, like, right. this little thing. And sometimes they, like, buck up. And I'd seen it happen, like, from a distance. But literally, it's dark. They're doing this presentation for this halftime show. And I'm just, like, standing there, like, literally, like, with my camera, chilling. I'm on the chute that has no railing behind me. Nothing. It's just, like, just, like, a rickety old thing. And this bowl, literally, like comes out of its cage like literally its arms are like over the cage i i almost fell off the back but it was also i was like this, this is like life and death right here i'm like i'm really about to die i'm like these cowboys like you can kind of push through like i would kind of squat down and like i'm pushing they're like excuse me and they like kind of run into you it's just like <laughs> like you are in it like i felt like a bull rider kind of so anyway those are probably my two like similar kind of events sort of in their own ways um a lot of adrenaline but they're very cool so 
so one day you're a NASCAR race driver, the next day you're a, pro- a professional bull rider. I mean, you're like any six-year-old's dream job. Um. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I can't believe it most of the time. Yeah. No. Cool. Um, so I want to get into some of just the, the tricks and tips and stuff that, that you yeah. can provide for, for me and everybody else out sure. there and, and then, you know, the stuff that you learn. So you talked a lot about it, the stuff that you learn, but what are some of the specific resources, whether it's, you know, newsletters or websites or YouTube channels or Twitter or Instagram accounts? whatever that you find yourself um, commonly going back to to learn things okay this is like super I feel like (laughs) basic but um, I like learned everything if you're starting like in the very beginning I would Mm -hmm. say like I don't yeah in the very beginning Peter McKinnon you know the YouTube guy like I learned like he has not only just like everything any question you have but I feel like he just walked through it in a very it was easy for me to understand. I would be like, okay, like he would go through it slowly. He'd go through it in a very like, I don't know. It just made sense to me the way he would go through everything. I find some YouTube channels, they jump right into these, like these screen recordings. And I'm like, wait, what? Where are you? Where are you? Where are we? Where, well, how did you do like the slow down back up? You know? And even if I pause it, I like, I'm just confused. So I learned like everything that I, began to know by Peter McKinnon and like I think what's his name Matty it's like his counterpart another Sweden guy um but so those were like big ones I mean honestly YouTube is my biggest like if there's any questions I have about anything I just like google it or YouTube it um as far as like accounts like I said I've been trying to like pull back a little bit from Twitter lately because I I think I dove way too hard at San Diego like I would get in really bad holes of like feeling really bad um just by like scrolling through by seeing and the people at the time i mean again like love their stuff so like you know clemson it started with but south carolina and andrew stewart was like i was a huge fan and now he's part of our team which is like it was so exciting i was like oh my gosh max and andrew what the heck um so that was really exciting because i always loved the way that he um made everything like look so cinematic you know the Mm -hmm. cinematic look i told you about Mm -hmm. like how do you know the blurred background like I feel like sometimes people are so focused on highlights and I'm actually not a huge like sports fan like I really like athletics because like I'm from the athletic side Mm -hmm. so I like the hard work the behind the scenes and I like the actual like athleticism but like I could care less about like whose team is playing what's going on like like I used to love those Gatorade commercials and stuff that were just like I didn't know who the guy was it wasn't a superstar it wasn't LeBron it was like high schoolers on like just grinding Mm -hmm. out whatever Mm -hmm. and those but it just showed like sweat and breath and like all this crazy stuff so i really like the way andrew like focused in on um like those things like hands and feet and like made it more personal like more human than just like how i think some accounts are just like and i know people love it and i know i'm sure every content producer would be like that's what people want or like the wide highlights i'm like boring to me to me personally but that's just because i'm not a huge sports fan so i always loved what he did um i don't know there's just like so much out there that like I mean I follow every like major um uh athletic department and I feel like I don't want to like again I've I've been out of it for a little bit I feel like I've been kind of backed off because I follow like so many different Mm -hmm. people and um but there I don't know there's just I feel like everyone now even people that I feel like I followed back that like I don't know who they are I don't know like what they're doing and sometimes they're really young like they're like students and stuff and so I don't actually know who they are they just like come up on my feet I'm like that is so cool I'm like I don't know who they are but I just feel like everything I see now is like so high quality and so good and I'm always like oh my gosh like who how who Oh my gosh. That, and again, that's why I've kind of like backed off of it. Cause I feel like even like three years ago, it was like you had like four or five people who were doing it right. Mm-hmm. Like schools. And you're just like, they're doing it right. And everybody else is doing it wrong. Or like they're doing it not so good. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like everyone is doing it right. I'm like, yeah. Ah. So I get overwhelmed. So I think everyone's good. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, but it's like like what you're saying with the the guys that Andrew and Max have joined. Like, if you see them, yeah. you know, it is a little bit overwhelming seeing the crazy stuff. But you can, there's so many positives that can be taken away from it too by you know d- yeah. taking something that you like from theirs and incorporating it into your style. Okay. Um, is yeah. is huge. Um, do you have? I mean, other than those guys, maybe, and we can talk about currently, um, mm-hmm. any like specific accounts or any specific people that are like you consider your creative aspiration right now that 
that you that you turn to when you you know maybe need an idea or just you see something you want to incorporate in your next project or anything like that well i follow so many people now like on my video account like Mm -hmm. it used to be a a smaller group of people just because i hadn't found people so i knew people by name and i knew exactly where they worked and i was and now everyone's changing around i mean like austin coon or whatever like i remember he was at south carolina now he's a freelancer Mm -hmm. like works for fresh tape all the time so i like I'm having a hard, I have a hard time like remembering now, like, cause like I said, so many people are so good. Like those individual accounts, I have them, but like, I don't know them by name right. anymore. No, no, totally. so I want to find those for you, but I just love, um, I mean in general and this again, it feels like cheating because they're brands. So it's probably an agency, but I have been so inspired by just like champion and under armor. Um, and like obviously Nike and everything they do, but just like, I feel like some of the bigger brand accounts, like I said, it used to be Gatorade that I felt like did the best production of like sports and those videos. And now it's like every sports brand is pr- producing these videos, you know, like Bose, of course, with their motion tracking and everything. Mm-hmm. But um, there have been like so many different brands that have started putting out stuff that like I'm like, I want to know who are doing those now. I'm like, who did this one? And I know it's like a huge agency. So it's like, again, it feels like cheating. Cause I'm like, well, of course you can do that. Cause you're probably like 40 years old and know everything. But, um, <laughs> let me, I want, I want to find like smaller things that I know I have. <laughs> no, even good brands though. Like, I mean, yeah. cause there's, I don't know, people, you know, people, you gotta aspire to something. Right. So, um, that's true. Like those that things. Is true. Well, I mean, I'll also say, well, I mean, this is, again, I feel like it's also interesting working for Fresh Tape because I've gotten to meet, like, I had a whole list of these creators that, like, I, you know, like, an Andrew Stewart, David Kushner, like, Emily Johnson, Mm -hmm. like, all these people that I would follow that um, I would never thought I would meet, and now, and they've all, they all work for Fresh Tape in some respect or another. So now I feel it's so weird. Like, I feel like I've met, like, uh, Maddie Williams, you know, Madison. Like, this, everything she does is, like, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, like, Carly Go, like, again, they're, like, from Clemson or um, these different schools. But, like, it's weird to have now met them. Like, now they're not just, like, these creators that I see as, like, you know, influencing everything. But they're like my friends kind of like I'll text them. I'm like, Hey, that was so cool. Whatever you just did. And it like, feels nice. Uh, but like Diego and Cole, um, they're both coming. There are interns that they come and work for us, but they've, they're so they're still in school, but they're just like grinding out new content all the time too. Um, so I'll get a list. I'll get a better list and go through because I definitely have them. Um, but I feel like I want to do them justice and yeah, not just, totally. um, yeah. Yeah. Them we'll, we'll put that in the show notes to, to, you know, okay. give people a little tease right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so talk about those, you know, you're talking about those interns. What advice do you have for, you know, people that are maybe still in college or just coming out of college that want to be where you're at right now, working for a, a fresh tape or something like that, doing the stuff that you're doing? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I recommend them going to any athletic department if, if they want to do sports. Like mm-hmm. if you're not just want to do like video, if you want to do any kind of sports video, Everybody that I've ever met or talked to, that's what they did. They either got a job outside of college or most of them, most people that I know, like, worked in while they were in school, like, at, while I would be rowing, like, they would be working um, in the athletic department. And I highly recommend, like, that is, like, I don't know how else you would get anywhere. Like, I really don't. I have no other suggestion other than to intern. Like, and I did it after school. So, like, mm-hmm. even if you were graduated, like, I did it after school. I did, yeah, part-time. I had a roommate for two years, like, in my room, post-school. So, like, make your sacrifices where you will. I nannied on the side. But, like, whatever you can do, like, if you want to do it, like, college athletics is the way to go. Um, And then my other advice, which I've kind of, like, kind of already said, but it's, like, if you want to do it, you have to, like, buy into it. So, like, I had an intern, um, Sam Frost, and uh, this other guy, Liam, uh, and Sam is now doing all the video for San Diego. I mean, not at cool. the moment, but, um, so she's taken on like everything that I was doing and mm-hmm. she is a student. She ended up, she was a soccer player, um, at USD, like I had been and, uh, it was, that was too much for her obviously. So she actually quit soccer cause she was like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to do this. So she quit wow. soccer and now she just makes videos. She does like literally everything I did as a student. Um, and so, but I told her when I left, cause I was like, I know you're a student and you're not paid. Like, you know, I was full time. And so, like, I, it was easier for me to sacrifice because I'm like, well, what else am I going to do? Like, this is my job. Um, but for her, she's sacrificing, like, her social life and, like, all this other stuff. Um, but I was like, if you want to do it, like, you'll get 
out of it what you put in, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody says that, but mm -hmm. it's true. It's like if you want to learn, like you literally have, and depending on the school you're in, but if you go in, I guarantee to any athletic department and you offer your services, sometimes it has to be for free. But like if you're a student, like what have you kind of got to lose, right. I guess? You can still have a second job even if you work one game a mm -hmm. week, but like putting the camera in your hand and actually like doing it and like really doing right. it, like that's the only way you learn. Like I had terrible, terrible content for like two years, like two whole years, like terrible content that I will never look at ever again. But like I needed to do that to be able to like get to like to learn from it and mm -hmm. be like, okay, this is where I need to be. Mm -hmm. Like this is the kind of, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, my two things is, yeah, work in an athletic department and then just like work your ass off and do like and volunteer and not just at the sports you like. That's the other thing. Like right. I think people like who are like oh i just want to do basketball like i just want to do football because i like that sport like it's not about the sport it's about the video mm -hmm. and so like if you're in it for the sports like that's cool but like at some point like it's not gonna be enough for you like right. you have to really like doing the video you're of it you're only gonna get so and far so, mm -hmm. yeah and so i'm like you're gonna have to do swimming you're gonna have to do track and you're gonna have to figure out how to make that creative because that is hard <laughs> to like figure out how to like make track look or cross country sorry mm -hmm. cross country look exciting so um, yeah, that would be just like be versatile. And the other thing I would say, actually, um, for someone who's like a little bit more advanced, like not just like starting out, mm -hmm. this was the best advice I got. I don't even remember who gave it to me, but somebody did. And they were like, you should, uh, expand like what you're doing. Like, don't just film sports. Like you should have like a, a bigger resume than just sports. So like, I think actually what got the attention of Fresh Tip, like I remember Jared commenting on my first call with him is I had gone home for my dad's birthday and I had made like a home, I think it was the first home video I made. I was like, oh, I have a camera. Why am I not, like, I love home. Why am I not shooting my home? Like, yeah. why not? Like, I'm, I want to. And so I started shooting at home, like just being myself, like, not, you know, doing anything crazy. And I made like a home, like, almost like a love letter video to my family. But it was like of my dad's weekend and my, and Jared was like, I saw that movie and I thought it could be a Toyota commercial. And I was like, what? But it was because of the heart in it, you know, mm -hmm. like didn't really like it was shot with my Canon ADD, like nothing special, but it was like different. I like used sound bites. It was like more of a story than like a sports game recap. You know, mm -hmm. that was all I was turning out was just like hype, 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 you know, nothing like storyline. Like I didn't have time to do any longer. Like we had a day in the life, but it was nothing like emotion. Like it would just get you hyped. Like right. but it didn't really pull your heartstrings. And so I started doing stuff at home and I highly suggest that to people who work in sports is to like do something outside of sports and like do it with your friends. Cause like they love you and do and it for nobody but yourself. Like yeah. it's not for a client and just or anything. Make it. And yeah. I go back and I watch those all the time just cause I'm like home. Oh my gosh, home, you know, but then people actually really like my friends really love, they're like, Oh my gosh, I love having a video of like, a memory of us but mm -hmm. it also expands my repertoire of like how to tell a story and like using different le it's like if i get a new lens or if i have something that i want to try out i test it on them mm -hmm. so um those are kind of my three tips i guess oh that's awesome some great great stuff this is one that i like to ask kind of all my guests because um, everyone's going through this and no matter what level you're at in your career like we're all human so uh what's your biggest struggle right now <sighs> well um so, like, before I would just cover a game, and I felt mm -hmm. like I was really good at doing that. And then, like, you know, once a quarter, I have to think about an intro video. And I'd be like, okay, what's, like, the story we're going to tell? Where are we going to do it? And, like, that would be, like, my big project, you right. know, and then little things, but, like, day in the life. But I really didn't have to think about it. It was more, like, just being the cameraman was, like, my skill that I had to have. And I think here at, like, an agency, I'm a lot – I'm challenged to, like, create ideas and, like, create – like, think of – things to right, do right and I like and I remember telling Jared and the team when I first got here I'm like I'm, we'd have a brainstorm and they'd be like Alan do you have anything and I'm like I'm having a really hard time like thinking outside of that like I, I my brain doesn't work that way yet right. and I think I'm getting better at it um, but I I will say I still think I struggle like if people see the stuff that we produce and they're like how did you think of that like major team effort because um and sometimes we snowball off each other and like it'll spark things but I think I still struggle with like conceptualizing new creative ideas because it's hard to think of that all the time like all the time mm -hmm. like thinking of new creative stuff and totally. so i think that's something i'm still working on uh that's now different than just a general like video struggles mm -hmm. cool so. 
Um, I want to start wrapping up here, but uh, what's your career aspirations? Like, what are you, what are you looking to go? What are you looking to be? Oh, wow. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, I feel, I've told you, and I watched Gatorade commercials and stuff as a kid, like, over and over again. And I was always, like, I never was like, oh, I'm going to be the video person. I just wanted to be a part of it. And so I actually went into PR thinking that I might do something, like, somehow get to, like, a sports agency that I can, like, help create these things. I didn't think of myself as being the videographer, but I was just like, I want to be a part of that somehow. So I was like, PR, mm, sounds right. Um, and now I'm like behind the camera and uh, that seems to now be my skill, but I still have, you know, desires to be part of something big mm-hmm. like that, you know, like the Nike commercials. But it's weird because the more I learn about it, like back when I was at San Diego, I would have said like a year before I knew about Fresh Tape, I would have said, I want to go to a pro team or I want to go to like a big school right. like the Clemson or like, a, you know, like I want to go to a place like a Pac-12 school. I want to go to UW. I want to like do something bigger, like what I'm doing now, but bigger. And then I learn, you know, you start learning things about the industry and you're like, oh, wait, maybe I don't want to do that. And then the thing I learned is like that my role would be the same everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's like you work long hours. It's just like a grind. You better love it, you know? And so I learned that pretty quickly. And now it's like, I'm here at an agency, which is really cool. I freaking love it. Um, But I think about those bigger projects, like the Gatorades and the Nikes of the world. But then you learn more about it and you're like, oh, wait, like, it's not a three man project. (laughs) Like, it's like, you are a peg, like you are a very specific peg. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I want it. Like I love the reason I love Fresh Tape is because I'm not a peg. I'm like literally everything. And we're all everything. Like, I could I could be hands off if I wanted to produce a like project manage an event and not shoot like I could do that if I asked Jared but normally I'm like I want to produce it like be project managing and I want to film it and I also would like to edit it mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like I don't really want to edit it so let's pass it off to somebody else and I don't have to it's like I can choose my role and I can be a director I can like I've been a director I've been a you know editor I've been a videographer I've been a project manager all these things um, and I, I'm having a hard time imagining a world that I could do all of those things or pick what I wanted to do in something like that. So now I'm actually pretty stumped on like what I'd want to do next because I'm like, <laughs> do I like everyone kind of says director, I think at some point of like, oh, eventually I'm going to want to be hands off. And I think I might eventually like in a long time want that of like, you know, you're ha- you have the monitor and you're like, OK, get down low and do, you know, and have somebody right. else be doing it. Right. Which sounds appealing, but then I've done that a little bit here. I've like tried that a little bit on a shoot, and I was kind of like, "Give me the ca- can I have the camera? Can I, can I do it? You know?" Yeah. So like, I have I have a hard time taking my hands off mm-hmm. everything because I that's how I was I, how most of us mm-hmm. were like come up. So um, I kn- I know some people feel strongly about not wanting to have that role, but I feel strongly that I do, and I find it very rare to find that anywhere else. So at the moment, I'm still figuring it out, but. That being said, I mean, those commercials and those things like and those emotion evoking, uh, you know, those tear wrenching, like I want to figure out how to be a part of that yeah. somehow. But that being said, I think Fresh Tape can do it, too. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see, you know. But yeah. Cool. Right on. So you're usually behind the camera, but this is your time in the spotlight. You got the microphone. So I want to give you a chance to make any shout outs that you th- <laughs> you, you threw a lot of love out through this whole thing to a ton of different people. But if there's anybody specifically <laughs> or anybody yeah. that you think you might have missed throughout, um, you know, throw some shout outs out there. Well, OK, I have two. I will say one. Um, she will not even watch this, but my old coach was actually my first inspiration because I showed her the video that I did that was absolute shit. I mean, at the time, I'm sure maybe it was fine, but it was terrible. And I look back and it's terrible. And she hyped me up so hard. She was like, you need to do this all the time. Like, you need to do that. Like, and I was a freshman and I was like, that was like somebody saying that and not being like, yeah, sure. Whatever. Like, you did that. Like, she was like, you and then I had made another one that was like better and she was like oh my gosh like Avalon you have this thing and I'm like and again these videos I can't tell you how trash they are like they're (laughs) and that's just not me being humble or anything like they are trash and so like thank you coach for believing in me so that was one and then obviously my parents I think I've already said that but I will not deny that like they I mean school all that stuff they bought me my first camera and so and it was supposed to be a loan I have yet to pay them back <laughs> and I will not remind them of that just because they're the most supportive um but like if I hadn't had that like it, it would have been a lot 
lag of a career if mm-hmm. I hadn't have like I was like I need I need creative something and they're like we'll help you so yeah. and I know that's not everybody has that and so that is a big I yeah that must go um said great and then lastly just where can people follow you where can people see your stuff <laughs> well I'm that video gal um also compliments my family for helping me think of that one. <laughs> but yeah, at Instagram, I'm at that video gal and same on Twitter. I think there's periods between one of them. We'll, I think I should change we'll that. Throw, but we'll throw links to that, to all those stuff. There's but somewhere. Yeah. Sweet. That's me. Before we end today's show, I want to put a special emphasis on the show notes for this episode. With all the incredible creatives Avalon mentioned, I encourage you to follow any you admire. As we talked about in the interview, these are some of the greatest resources you have available to you, and their amazing work is not meant to discourage you, but rather to inspire you. I want to close out by saying thanks once again to Avalon for joining the show, and thank you to our sponsors, Hall Pass Media and Sports Business Classroom. You can learn more about both at hallpassnetwork.com and sportsbusinessclassroom.com. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week.